So I teach uh, medical students, residents, family practice residents. So are you, do you Yes, I do them. Mm -hmm. And balloons? Yeah. Balloons, yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trained to do, yes. Mm -hmm. Folks, you got something to look forward to. Stents and balloons in your vessels. My stick question is, why stent when you can prevent? So you stick it in here, and you run this tube on up here into your heart. <clears throat> Blow the balloon up in your, in your blood vessel. How many are looking forward to that? Well, one of our members had it done just this week. <laughs> so, take it serious. You're going to have a heart attack. You're going to die of something. It's going to be most likely a heart attack. So I don't want to scare you. Oh, we're going to bow our heads and ask God's blessing so we can get the most out of how to prevent a heart attack today. Let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Father in heaven, bless Dr. Noah. May he be inspired by the Holy Spirit to give us the knowledge we need, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Here's the format. I'm going to give a five minute, 10 minute talk. Then the rest of the time, I'm going to answer questions from you. Couple of basic rules, please follow. If you want to ask a question, I have two microphones here. I'll give you one. Use the microphone, speak into it. So I want to get it on record so that I, you know, there are people listening to the radio right now. I want them to get the question before they hear the answer. I have two microphones here. Okay, and uh, the other, as I said, I'm willing to answer questions on any medical topic. I'm a heart specialist. I'm board certified in internal medicine, cardiology, and interventional cardiology. But I would answer questions on diabetes, on cancer, uh, because I've spent a lot of time reading, studying these topics. Okay, let me throw out a couple of things for, at you first. Did you know? that 85% of all chronic illnesses can be prevented and more importantly can be even cured even after you get it by changing your lifestyle. Did you know that? 85% of all chronic illnesses can be prevented and even can be cured even after you get it in many cases by changing your lifestyle. I'm going to talk about that today. Okay. Dr. Colin Campbell, I told you I'm going to give you a five minute talk, then we'll open it up for uh, discussions and questions. Dr. Colin Campbell was a professor at Cornell University in New York, very prestigious institution. He headed the Department of uh, Nutrition, Human Nutrition. He did a very interesting experiment. What he did was he took laboratory rats and gave them a special chemical and the rats developed liver cancer. Now, we have such models for medical purposes. We have rats that have high blood pressure. We have rats that have diabetes, because that's the way we can test out new products, okay? And so uh, there is a way to can cause cancer in rats. In fact, you can cause cancer in human beings by giving the same chemical. It's called aflatoxin. So he gave them aflatoxin, caused liver cancer. Then he fed them a diet a once one group of mice, uh, laboratory mice, were given a diet that in which about 10 percent, I'm sorry, 20 um, percent of the calories came from casein, milk, pro milk protein. The other group of mouse, uh, mice, laboratory mice, were given only 5 percent of the calories in terms of case, uh, casein. He found something very interesting. The ones that got 20 percent of the calories from casein, uh, grew the liver cancer very rapidly. The ones who were given 5% uh, of the calories in the form of casein, actually, he thought the cancer might stop growing. Actually, the cancer shrunk in size. He was kind of amazed. I said, well, what's, that's interesting. 
then he switched them around just to make sure you know he wasn't coming you know observing some sort of an error and exactly the same thing happened the mice with the put on the higher amount of calories in terms of, in terms of casein grew, grew the cancers rapidly and the other ones shrunk the cancer then he thought protein is protein so he decided to give them soybean protein instead of milk protein and the cancer shrunk he reported this showing that there is something in animal products that makes cancers grow and there is something in vegetable protein that actually makes the cancer shrink in size this was reported by him about 10 years ago and they did not fully understand what was going on later on other scientists figured it out they found out actually animal products promote the release of a chemical out of the liver called IGF1 it is known as insulin like growth factor number one actually what happens is the back of your head there is a gland called on top of the head I should say inside the brain there is a gland called the pituitary gland I'm sure some of, most of you heard of the gland it produces certain chemicals one of the chemicals it produces is called the growth hormone that makes everybody grow that growth hormone actually comes down to the liver where it's actually stimulates a, it's either converted or stimulates the formation of the IGF-1 insulin like growth factor okay well, number one they discovered that this was actually instrumental in making things grow okay now children need to have growth hormone because you want to grow but once you're grown up you don't want to be growing again you see but the problem is when you take these a product that increase the level of IGF-1 it makes the cells grow but remember there are I don't know whether you are aware that all of us have cancer cells in our bodies were you aware of that even babies newborn babies have cancer cells what happens the body will detect them and the immune system will destroy them now if the cancer cells are growing in large numbers stimulated by this chemical called IGF-1 then the immune system can't keep up with it it says hey there are too many of them growing too fast I can't keep up with it that's how cancer gets hold of you I mean get that it takes hold in, the, in your body and grows uncontrollably then it's too late okay now I'm coming to a, an interesting experiment that was done in New York City by a group of scientists MDs PhDs at the Pritikin Institute there is an institute called the Pritikin Institute. That's a story by itself, but I will tell you another time. In the Pritikin Institute, these scientists were doing some very fascinating experiment. What they did was they got a couple of volunteer, a uh, few volunteers who had been vegans for 15 years. Vegans mean they don't consume any animal product of any kind. They had been vegans for 15 years. Then they took volunteers who are meat eaters who are willing to participate in the study. What they did was they mesh, they took some blood from both groups, measured the level of IGF-1. The meat eaters had high levels, the vegans had low levels. Then they took a drop of blood from the meat eaters, dropped it on cancer cells that are growing in a little dish called Petri dish. And it killed 9% of the cancer cells. So even bacon and, um, you know, will kill some cancer cells, about nine percent okay whereas the blood from the vegans were able to kill eight times better they were able to kill 82 percent of the cancer cells but they didn't stop there they did these guys are bright guys what they did was they said ask the meat eaters could you please go on a vegan diet just for two weeks 14 days they said okay they went on a vegan diet for 14 days remember these other guys have been vegans for 15 years after these meat eaters went on a vegan diet for 14 days they took a blood sample measured the IGF-1 level it was as low as the vegans who had been vegans for 15 years then they dropped that same blood drop of blood on cancer cells growing in a petri dish it was able to kill 82 percent of the cancer cells just like the vegans for 15 years in other words 15 days later 14 days later 
their blood became as powerful as vegans blood who have been vegans for 15 years able to kill cancer cells eight times better now here's the beauty the scientists didn't stop there they said okay how about we put back some of the IGF that was missing IGF-1 added back some IGF-1 into that mixture the cancer kill rate dropped out to 9% conclusively showing that IGF-1 is a major culprit in ca causing cancers and all animal products will raise IGF-1 level thereby promoting cancer growth and all vegan products will actually not stop the cancer, but it'll also make it shrink. Let me give you a practical example. There was a study published in which uh, men who had prostate cancer underwent biopsy to confirm that. They found that the cancer was confirmed. They were scheduled for cancer surgery about a month later. So the scientist said, what do you lose by trying something? So they gave each man one tablespoon of ground, freshly ground flaxseed three times a day. One tablespoon of freshly ground flaxseed three times a day. And then a month later, when they removed the prostate gland, they put it under the microscope, they found that the cancer had already begun to shrunk, shrink within 30 days. Now, compare this to another study in which they found that one consumption of one egg a day in these men who had prostate cancer made the cancer grow spread twice as fast. When they consumed one serving of uh, chicken a day, the prostate cancer spread four times faster. Now, I believe that the best form of diet for you to prevent cancer, cure diabetes. I'm not joking. You can cure diabetes in the early stages with this plan. All you need to do is to avoid all animal products. No animal product of any kind. Don't believe all the stuff you read on the internet. Let me tell you something else that I'm sure even medical doctors are gonna be upset with me when I mention this. Most doctors don't know anything about nutrition. Now you'll say, what makes you different? Well, because I spent two years studying this. That's why it makes it. I didn't know much about nutrition until I decided to sit and study about it, okay? They gave a test to doctors to see how much they knew about human nutrition. You know what the average grade was? 65%. What's kind of, what kind of grade? Is that a D minus? Okay, that's how much your doctor knows about human nutrition. So don't take advice from him or her, okay? Now, a couple of other things to remind you. Many of the common ideas that you are told are wrong, plain wrong. Have you been told that fish is good for you? Bad for you, really bad for you. Have you been told fish oil you should consume every day? No, that's gonna kill you. Have you been told about vitamin supplements? Most of them don't work. Okay? I, I will stop right now and ask, you know, find out if you have any questions, and I will answer the questions as you uh, go along, and I will expand on. Yes, Pastor. Uh, somebody give him a microphone, please. I got interrupted in understanding what you were saying, that you said 10% of uh, casein, which is milk products. 5%. 5%. 10, 10, 20% versus 5%. 20% versus 5%. Now, the, the, calor, calorie, sup, uh, the calorie was sup, uh, supplied through casein. 20% uh, of the calorie was, calories were sub, uh, supplied in the form of casein in one group of animals. The other group, they, he was giving the mice uh, 5% of the calories. In fact, he repeated that experiment in a different way. What he took was just one group of mice, gave them 20%, cancer turned it on, and then put them on 5%, cancer got turned off. Now, uh, are you saying that there is some good in 5% in of casein in the milk products? 
I'm are sorry? Are you saying that there's some good in 5%? No, that was the initial experiment he did, but further experimentations show, have shown that no animal product is actually safe for you. Okay. No animal, even 5% casein is no good for you. Let me tell you my sins, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I love goat milk, um, whatever it is, when it tastes like buttermilk. Yes. Is there anything wrong with that? Yes, it's not good for you because it promotes the uh, level of IGF-1. Here, by the way, let me give you something. I'm not here, I'm not your conscience. I'm not here to tell you what you should do, what you not to do. I'm here to give you the information. It's for you to figure out whether you want to adopt these ideas to your health. I'm not your conscience. I'm not here to tell you this is what you need to do. You can do what you like. If you, you know, if you decide this advice you don't care about, that's fine, okay? But I'm here to give you information so you can use it. Unfortunately, all animal products increase the level of IGF-1. Now, you have any other question, follow-up question, Pastor? Yeah. What can you eat to get the satisfaction of some uh, you, you want to get uh, satisfaction of sauerkraut? Okay, is that microphone on? Okay, uh, there's another microphone too. I'll give it to you so you can use that. So, is there, there I, I'm sure there's a benefit in sauerkraut. Yes, there is. Is there any other kind of food where you get the satisfaction like you do from cottage cheese and buttermilk, things like that, that I crave. Right. Actually, there are, uh, believe it or not, would you believe there's a, uh, somebody from Australia has released a uh, recipe for making cheese without animal product. It's out of the world. Okay. I will be happy to email you the recipe if you are interested. Uh, my email sh address should be there on the sheet. Now, somebody asked during lunchtime said, what about fish? Uh, I'm sure you're all wondering about fish. Let me tell you two things about, one about something about fish oil. Excuse me. Do you know that 100% of all fish everywhere, even the ones caught in North Pole, contains dioxins and PCBs? You know what dioxins do? cause cancer, okay? PCBs cause cancer. They found that even in the oil, I mean, uh, the uh, fish that was caught in North Pole. So no fish oil is good for you. In California, scientists took, bought fish oil from reputable pharmacies, brand name fish oil, took it back to the laboratory and checked it out. They found dioxins and PCBs 80 times what is considered safe for human consumption. Remember, supplement industry is not controlled by FDA. So they can sell anything they want. They found 80 times, not 80%, 80 times the amount of dioxins and PCBs considered safe for human consumption. So fish oil is not safe. But here's the thing. Every time you come across something that's not bad, for, I mean, good for you, I will also give you something that can substitute, that's good for you. You know what we'll do just as well, or even better? Uh, hi there. We missed you this morning. I know. Okay, so you know what? We'll give you all the omega-3s. You know, the ome everybody talks about omega. I need my omega-3 from fish oil. You can get omega-3 from ground, flex freshly ground flaxseed. Okay, let me ask one question uh, answer. A pastor asked, can you take it as fish oil, I mean, uh, as flaxseed oil? Answer is no, no, no. It does not work. Why it does not work? For example, Japanese scientists, actually they did a head-to-head -head study. They, not Japanese, I'm, I switched gears. In America, they did a study where they checked uh, flaxseed oil versus flaxseed. Flaxseed did tremendous amount of good. Flaxseed oil didn't do a darn thing. 
here's the principle okay do you know there are three countries in the world where the calcium supplementation is the highest united states united kingdom and sweden do you know which country have the largest number of bone fractures and osteoporosis united states united kingdom and sweden how do you explain that well not necessarily supplements don't work okay supplements don't work japanese scientists decided to try an experiment they took tomato extract they they thought that all the good nutrition from tomato they extracted put into a capsule form okay or pill form these volunteers were asked to eat four four or five tomatoes plus about six of these pills which is equivalent to about 15 or 16 tomatoes okay the other one simply ate six tomatoes these people who took extra supplement didn't get anything out of it nothing now there's a company i won't mention name we won't talk about any commercial product here there's a company which makes uh, all the goodness of broccoli in a capsule what two pounds of broccoli nutrients in one capsule they tested it doesn't do a darn thing nothing so what the question what the principle is okay let me give you another example i've used this so many times i'm sure my audience on my radio station is tired of hearing this can i who can i pick on somebody please give them give her a microphone let me pick on her for a second i don't mean i'm not going to be mean to you ma'am i'm just trying to be playful here okay let me ask you a question which is the largest land animal in the world that's walking on the ground largest land animal elephant elephant okay i'm talking about a grown elephant how many gallons of cow's milk does a grown elephant drink every day none how many calcium tablets does a grown elephant swallow every day none have you seen the bones of elephants at least in the museums or on television you've seen them you know huge boards now the he needed calcium to build those humongous bones right where did he get the calcium to build those humongous bones what do they eat ma'am they eat green leafy vegetables okay so let me ask you a question if you ate you know kale broccoli and spinach do you think you'll have any trouble with calcium problems no or calcium deficit no so the moral of the story is pills don't work plants work ma'am please there's a lady who has a question at the back besides coq10 for the heart um coq co by the way i'm not against supplements okay coenzyme q10 actually seems to have some benefit right particularly if you're taking statin drugs first of all you shouldn't be taking statin drugs but i'm a heart specialist i do prescribe statin drugs but if you're going to take statin drugs you get a lot of side effects okay ma'am here's the problem with statin drugs suppose you have a itch itching right right you keep scratching it and then put some ointment on it keep scratching it put ointment on it does it make any sense what do you do, you do first stop scratching right <laughs> okay so the same thing you dump all the junk into your body and you say well i'm going to take statin to lower the cholesterol did you he have you heard of the um i'm not joking this is serious business have you heard of the max statin have you heard of it? they're thinking about it no 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 I'm just giving you a story. Have you heard of max statins? They're thinking about it. They're looking into it. You go to McDonald's, you'll pick up cheeseburgers, fries, and a Coke, and then right to the next condiments where there's relish and the ketchup, there'll be a packet called max statin. <laughs> they're looking at it. they haven't released it yet but they're looking at it so you, you you raise your cholesterol with a cheeseburger and then lower it with a statin right no how world is as that crazy this is craziness if it is something is bothering your skin stop scratching it to make before you make it worse right and that's the problem now she asked a question what is the question again i forgot 
Yeah, coenzyme Q10 actually seems to help uh, in patients who have heart disease. But you know something? If you ate a uh, balanced diet of grains, beans, greens, and whole grains, you should never need any supplements except three. Only three supplements you ever need. What are they? You need B12, about five micrograms per day. You should take vitamin D3, because vitamin D levels are low in most human beings. This idea that, you know, if you spend your spend in the sunshine 15 minutes, you'll have enough vitamin D is not true anymore. What they did was they measured vitamin D in Make, you know, these uh, surfers in Hawaii who love to surf, all they're wearing, uh, s you know, small little uh, uh, swim, s you know, thongs or whatever, and this, you know, <laughs> speedo or whatever, and they, you know, uh, surfboarding all day long, they found they didn't have enough vitamin D. So everybody should take vitamin D about 2,000 units, but here's the beauty, here's what you need to know about vitamin D. Here is benefit. This is benefit, okay, on this side. Benefit, no, I know I'm a doctor. I can write any way I want. Benefit, here is, uh, here is the dose. As you increase the dose, the, ben the benefit goes up, okay? I'm sorry, I sh let me draw it in a different way. Let me put it in a different way, excuse me. Let's call it death rate, okay? Death rate. Chances of dying. When your vitamin D level is very low, this is vitamin D level. As the vitamin D level, you know, increases, the death rate drops. But if you keep on increasing vitamin D supplementation, death rate goes up. So just because 2,000 is good, 20,000 is not better. It's a sweet spot. You want to be in the sweet spot. That is about 2,000 units per day. 2,000 units per day for the whole day. Vitamin D3. Yes, ma'am. Please give it a microphone. Well, what can you do if you have what they call tachycardia? Tachycardia. Tachycardia is not based on nutrition. There are some, remember I told you when I opened my talk, I said 85% of all chronic illnesses, but there are 15% of the diseases which you have no control over. Tachycardia is one of them. I'm an expert in that area. I treat patients for tachycardia. I see almost one patient every week with that kind of condition. There are many kinds of tachycardias. Um, there is a supraventricular tachycardia. There is ventricular tachycardia. Among the supraventricular tachycardia, where your doctor told, did the doctor tell you had SVT, supraventricular tachycardia? No, he said it was caused from anxiety. Anxiety, okay. So you know how to reduce anxiety level? Well, in addition to, in addition to giving all your, your problems to the Lord and getting rest, this also will help you. Saffron. Mm -hmm. Saffron comes from the crocus plant. The female crocus plant has the stents that stick out of the center. They pluck it, dry it in the sun, and that's it. Now, it takes about one square mile of crocus plant to get one pound of saffron. That is why it is the most expensive spice in the world. But the good news is you only need a tiny amount. You need just a tiny amount, about 20 milligrams is all, I'm sorry, 30 milligrams is all you need per day. That will improve your memory, excuse me, it will improve depression, it'll make you happier. Yes? Now, what is tachycardia? Tachy, oh, I'm sorry, I should have explained. Tachy means fast. Cardia means heart, so fast heartbeat. Okay? Right, so, so what do you take for it? No, no, no. Tachycardia, I told you, it is not treatable with pills and pills and portion. That is a an anatomical problem in the heart. It has many reasons. But if it is due to anxiety, that's a different pos possibility. You can lower the anxiety level through other mechanisms. Okay. 
and for depression, for anxiety, you can use saffron to make it better. Okay. Somebody has a question over there, sir. There are two microphones, but uh, 30 milligrams daily. By the way, three zero, three zero. By the way, many of this information I'm giving out is printed on the sheets that are kept there. There are about uh, 12 of them, 12 different. They summarize a lot of the stuff I teach. Yes, sir, you have a question. So my, my question will have a follow-up question based upon sure. your answer. Sure. So you mentioned that there's three supplements that uh, individuals should have, and the first one you mentioned was B12. Why is that? Because all vegans do not have, uh, the veg vegans don't have any vitamin, vegan products do not have any vitamin B12. So you have to supply it from outside. So yeah, my, my, my follow-up follow question to that is based on, first of all, just uh, thinking on terms of how God created things, right? Yes. Um, first of all, is it because it's, as time went on, we ended up having a need for this uh, B12? But now, coming more to a scientific standpoint, uh, the National Academy of Science has a book that indicates that gooseberries have B12. Purdue University on their website indicates that uh, comfrey uh, mm -hmm. is a plant that you'd find in tropical countries has B12, although okay. they caution that it doesn't have adequate amounts. Yes. Right, so at least those are two recognized institutions that indicate uh, vegan, um, vegan uh, sources of B12. Then yes. the third thing that I've always been wondering is in Zimbabwe, I come from Zimbabwe. Yes. We have a lot of fruits that have not been scientifically examined. Yes. For example, we have towes. Yes. We have, um, uh, we have nyi and so forth. And all these plants have not. Yes. And it's always been very interesting in my mind that the scientific community claims that there is no vegan sources, but they have not even evaluated a number of the plant sources in my own country. Right. And so I've always wondered. Uh, okay. it, it, how has the scientific community come to that conclusion when well, they haven't evaluated everything available? Would you feel more comfortable if I made the statement, modified the statement in a way? At the present time, at the present time, I'm not aware of any vegan product that contain adequate amount of vitamin B12. Would that be a more accurate statement, number one? Number two, I've been questioned on the radio. You know, we, I do a radio show every week. I've been questioned on this uh, before. If you're a creationist, you know, why didn't God, you know, why, wh how is that you don't get in a, you know, vitamin B12 from be vegan? Because uh, original diet was a vegan diet, correct? Right? Somebody is not, everybody's agreement with that. God didn't, uh, Adam, God did not give Adam and Eve a steak, did he? Okay. So here's the problem. Are you willing to accept this theory that Everything was perfect in the Garden of Eden before sin entered the world. Are you willing to admit that sin has deteriorated the world over the last 6,000 years? Can we at least agree the apples and mangoes and strawberries probably tasted a lot sweeter and better in the Garden of Eden than now? Would you agree? I mean, come on, sin has ruined the whole thing. So is it possible that the human body has dis dis uh, deteriorated so much so that that we are not able to generate some of these, you know, ingredients that we need for daily life. That is my creationist answer to the question, how come, you know, because the people always ask me, if you, God must have internet, internet intended us to eat meat, otherwise we would get our vitamin B12, you see? Yes, Pastor. Okay, coming back to cheese. Yes. The Bible re, uh, records many, many times Joseph took cheese to his brothers and yes. so forth. Yes, yes. Could it be that they got their B12 that way? Uh, quite possible, but you know, um, as unsavory the topic is, let me explain how most of us get our B12. You no. know, in the developing countries in America 100 years ago, we didn't have any problem with B12 deficiency. You know why? Because they're eating meat and cheese. No, where did the B12 come from? Where? 
Why? Bacteria. Uh -huh. so yeah, I, it's a it's back, the fecal contamination, to be blunt. I've heard people say... Fecal, fecal contamination, okay? I've heard, I've heard people say if you floss your teeth or you pick the stuff out of your teeth, you'll get B12. I don't know about that. All I can know, tell you is that E. coli bacteria can, you know, make B12. B12 really is a in fecal contamination, unfortunately. That's unsavory. Right, but how about sauerkraut? Would that give you B12? Pastor, I already told you, you can eat as much sauerkraut as you want. Sauerkraut is good for you, okay? Cabbage is very good for you. I'm not so sure about vinegar. I would use, uh, a, you know, lemon juice instead of vinegar. But sauerkraut is okay. You know, it's not a problem for you. No, that should be fine. Um, you had a question, ma'am, and then he had a, has a question. Uh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. I think the sauerkraut got to be not cooked in cans. Fresh. Fresh, yes. I, I go for that, yes. Yes, sir. You were talking about flaxseed. What about uh, chia seed? Chia seeds um, contain quite a bit of benefits, but flax, seed, uh, flax seeds have like 900 times more lignans, which is what you want, than uh, many of the other seeds. Like, for example, uh, sesame seeds contain some lignans too. Chia seeds contain some lignans too, but flax seed beats them all. They have about eight, 700 to 900 times more lignans than most other prior, you know, seeds. Yes, sir, you had a follow-up question. One more follow-up is on all the fruits and vegetables that we're eating. I believe that you really should, as much as you can, control the source that you're getting it from. Of course. You know, the best That's way to eat it is all natural, organic, but it's not that easy. Uh, he, uh, somebody has a question there. Please give him a microphone. Yeah, I knew you'd use a microphone. Please, thank you. I found by study that uh, anything you, any vegetation you buy, if it's not organic, most of it's grown with animal products. Yes. So th that's hard to avoid. Right. Well, do the best you can. Do the best you can. You know, God wants us to live as pure a life, as healthy a life as possible within what you can do. I mean, listen, if you are in a lonely place where you have no access to any decent food, then you eat what you can until you get out of the situation. Like somebody challenged me on a radio station. He says, if you're stranded in a place, you know, in a you know, wilderness with no... Uh, you know, a food, would you eat um, some bugs? The answer is yes, because it's better to, you know, survive. I don't think it's will for you, God, it's God's will for you to, you know, crawl, you know, just crawl up and die. He wants you to live. But the fact of the matter is, but if you're thinking, if you're telling me, hey, you know what, I'm in a wilderness situation at my home and I need to eat some, uh, worms every day, I'm not sure I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> well, if you're eating, you're, are you talking about, you're talking about, you're talking about uh, the um, lo uh, lo uh, locusts. Locusts yeah. and crickets. They're yeah, they're clean, actually. They're clean animals. Yes. Uh, she has another question at the back. Well, listen, God wants us to maintain the highest form of health, okay? I'm not going to, I'm not going to mince words. There are times when, for example, is antibiotic good for you? No. Is pneumonia good for you? Okay, so if you're going to die of pneumonia, you're going to get into trouble with some antibiotics. Which is a better, a lesser of the two evils? Thank you. That's what I teach. So in medicine, we don't have a choice between good and bad. We have a choice between bad and bad. And we say, OK, this is the lesser of the two evils, and I choose that. For example, there's a raging controversy about vaccination. I've been asked tons and tons of times, well, well don't you know vaccination is bad? How can you recommend vaccination? Because it has saved more children's lives than it has hurt. Am I saying it is safe? No, it's not. Vaccination is not safe. Okay, it's not 100% safe. Some children will get hurt, 
but the number of children getting hurt will be so small compared to the number of children that are saved i believe it's better to err on the side of giving the vaccination yes ma'am you had a question in order to get your omega 3 6 and 9 i read where you can eat three brazil nuts a handful of sunflower seeds and 10 almonds each day will give you omega 3 6 and 9 well yes but here's the thing most seeds and nuts contains omega 3s okay and that's our flax seed. I pick on flax seed because it's inexpensive, it's easily available, and it's not as expensive as Brazil nuts. Well, first of all, if you eat a balanced diet, you're gonna get all three. Uh, raw, why do, you, why do you go 75% raw, ma'am? Well, let me explain to you. Okay. Well, the, the only thing I can tell you is that my nursing career from epidural steroid injections messed up the pH in my body. So it's the okay. thing I can put raw. Okay. Okay. I believe that, you know, raw vegetables are definitely healthy for you. But do I believe that everything should be eaten raw? No. There are three vegetables that actually gain nutrition when you uh, cook them. No broccoli, no. Carrots. Uh, tomatoes gain nutrition, yes. Because they release more of the lycopenes. Kale. The longer you cook the kale, more nutrition it gains. And there's one other, one other thing that you may not know. Celery gains more nutrition when you cook it. So if you want to eat raw celery, fine. But you put it in a soup, you get even more nutrition. I'm sorry? All right. Um, any other? Yes, sir. You have a question. Um, can you eat raw potato? Because it has poison. Yes. If you if you eat raw potato, just make sure you peel it. I'm sure you all of you love potato peelings, right? Okay. Um, no, not good for you. It's dangerous. There is a there is a poison just under the skin. It is meant to discourage the potato beetle from eating the plant. Okay, you know potato beetle? So the nature produce, the potato produces a chemical that's under the peeling. And we have known about it a long time ago, for a long time. But thought, people thought, ah, oh, it's a small amount, doesn't make any difference. Now we think it actually makes a difference. So you should peel your potatoes before you cook them. Uh, yes, you had another um, question. I come from Mexico and a lot of people do like a home, homemade remedy. Yes. And we used to take uh, raw potato, blend it with milk, and then strain it and drink mm -hmm. the milk. Yes. That was supposed to be good for somebody who has gastritis. The milk you add, the milk, it becomes no good. Did you know, for example, how many of you love strawberries, blueberries, okay, blackberries? It's good for you until you put some whipped topping on it. You know what it becomes? Wood chips. I'm being facetious. The minute you put any milk product on the berries, it blocks the absorption of all the nutrients from berries into the body. So you might as well eat wood chips. So in other words, you are eating expensive berries and you're getting no nutritional benefit because you ate it with sugar or cream. So, same thing. Once you add milk to the potatoes, it's no good. Almond milk is good for you. Soy milk is good for you. So, I would strongly recommend soy milk. In fact, a cup of soy milk contains almost the same amount of calcium as cow's milk. And I just finished telling you, you don't need cow's milk, okay? But if you're thinking about calcium, quote unquote, then you drink uh, soy milk. It contains, by the way, one precaution, if you're gonna eat, uh, drink soy milk or uh, calcium supplementation, you know what you should do? Follow the label, you know what the label says? Shake it before you drink it because the calcium drops to the bottom. So you need to shake it before you drink it. If you're drinking uh, soy milk for calcium supplementation. Yes, There's ma'am.
explain it? Let me explain that. Let me explain that, okay? There were a couple of studies which showed, in fact, one of the famous uh, uh, doctors that I actually admire gave this uh, information that is slightly erroneous. Uh, they have done studies that show that people who consume a lot of soybean products have a slightly increased risk of breast cancer. But when we analyze this, we turned out to be not accurate. What happens is that um, you need to consume about 20 servings of soybean. You know how much soybeans that per day is? That's a lot of soybean products. Nobody, nobody in Japan or China eats that many, 20, 28 servings. Between three to five servings of soybean product a day actually lowers the risk of breast cancer. How is it? Because we found that women who had breast cancer once they were followed for five years. They found that women who consumed soybeans, I'm sorry, women who did not eat any soybean products, 40% of them were dead in five years. Whereas the women who have breast cancer who ate, consumed some soybean products, 90% of them were alive at the end of five years. Okay? So, yes, if you take 30 servings of soybean, it might be harmful, but in the normal amount that you take, it is not harmful. And this idea that soybeans contain uh, estrogen-like chemicals, uh, that is not true. It, has this, it does not have the same effect on the body as estrogen. They happen to look like it. In fact, it has some benefit because you see, Japanese women and Chinese women rarely have menopausal symptoms. Did you know that? Why? Because they consume a lot of soybean products. Yes, sir, you had a question. Biggest factor, though, as far as food chain is the GMO and the pesticides that they've looked at. Mm -hmm. Anything you buy from a store, unless you know it's totally destroyed, even a lot of the things that are advent are packed in and selling, yes. Yes. has that. And that's yes. a big factor that we have to recognize. I, I agree with you. I don't have any answer to that uh, concern. I agree. In fact, have you seen some of the imitation meat products, the labels? Contains a lot of chemicals, okay? But although it is interesting, the soybean isolate that they use to prepare some of these actually has been known to have lots of benefits. But by the time you add the calcium chloride and the, you know, the innumerable other additives, it's probably not a health food anymore. He is talking about non-GMO versus GMO. Unfortunately, you know, we are, in fact, Europe, GMO is not allowed, you know that, right? GM product. It is interesting, the American farmers are raising soybeans to sell it to Europe for non-GMO, but you may not get GMO soybeans in this country very easily. Yeah. By the way, uh, did you know sweet potatoes can be used for, for cancer treatment? How about, what do you mean, sweet potatoes, ma'am? You're talking about ap apricot can, can, uh, seeds, right? It contains lateral. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It does not work. Now, here's the thing. I think, oh, let me, uh, if you have another question, I want to tell, oh, yes, yes, ma'am, you have a question. Uh, this, <laughs> this recipe you gave us, uh, does this, Increase, decreases uh, diabetes? Well, okay, let's talk about diabetes. Um, let, let me give you a practical example. Um, I have a, a friend, he lives in New York City. He had a small kind of a mini stroke. He went to the doctor, discovered his blood sugar was in 350. And he went on a vegan diet with no animal products of any kind and daily exercise. 18 months later, his diabetes is completely gone. His blood sugars are normal. So what do you need to do to um, get rid of diabetes? The first thing you do is to go on a vegan diet, okay? 
there is so much myth about these diets i need to tell you that you know what is the best diet for all human beings i know i'm sure i'm going to get a dozen questions right after i say this the best diet for all human beings including diabetes diabetic except unless you have insulin dependent diabetes you have to modify it a bit is a low fat high complex carbohydrate vegan diet let me repeat that what you need is a low fat high complex carbohydrate vegan diet there is a you can google you can go search it on the internet there is a gentleman in oregon or washington state it's called six as uh, uh, potatoes for 60 days or something like that potato diet he went on on a whim he decided to go on only potatoes for 60 days now potatoes everybody said carb you know you're going to get fat right he went on potatoes for 60 days in 60 days he lost uh, weight he reversed his diabetes completely so you know this myth this this i get very very upset when people say well carbs make you fat if carbs make you fat japanese korean chinese indian should be all dead by now right what do they eat man rice okay peruvian should be dead by now too you know what they eat in peru potatoes morning noon and night how come they are not fat you know what makes you fat fat makes you fat okay yeah one baked potato will contain about i'm talking about average size baked potato may contain maybe 300 calories maybe but the minute you put sour cream and butter it turns out to 6 700 800 calories now let me ask you let me pick on this gentleman is he had is he a microphone let me ask you a question i'm not trying to pick on you i'm just being playful here if i told you you had only baked potatoes for lunch how many can you eat probably one no i'm sure you can eat at least two or three if you had nothing else to eat okay two two maybe three okay but but you are not going to get fat on those three uh, potatoes because they only contain 900 calories uh, at the most i'm talking about average size okay um, be careful where you go because the last time i went to los angeles i, I was eating with in a steakhouse with other people so i ordered i told them i just wanted some roasted vegetables and a baked potato give me two and he said um, sir are you sure you want two you haven't seen our baked potato i said okay i'll try one and if i need it and came the humongous <laughs> baked potato <laughs> and i said i'm glad i had it only one so <laughs> the moral of the story is i'm talking about average size baked potato you cannot get fat eating baked potatoes unless you put sour cream and butter on it so what do you put in it i'm sorry oh what? you can put <laughs> salsa you can put salsa on it okay you can put mrs dash on it pepper and salt okay. you know you, there are so many other stuff you can do just use your imagination you'll be amazed i was another um, I was in a medical meeting. I was in a conference in Nebraska, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. I had to go to a medical meeting, and it was hosted, which means I was not in charge of the arrangement. So they said, we, we are all going to go out to eat. And I said, OK. I jumped into the car. They drove us. And when they opened the door, I looked up steakhouse. I said, OK, well, we'll figure it out. So everybody ordered steak and uh, chicken or whatever. So the waiter came around and said, do you have any pasta? He said, no, sir, we don't have any pasta. I said, roast me some vegetables and give me a couple of baked potatoes with nothing on it. OK. Came, I ate it. I had, it was full. It was satisfying. I had, you know, I was very, very happy. And I could hear a lot of moans and groans around the table. Oh, I don't feel good. <laughs> Ribeye and steak. The point is this. I have a friend who actually, I think I, have, I, think I mentioned to you, I have three ministries. Uh, this is a duet ministry I do with Londa Hoffenberger. I have a solo ministry which I brought, uh, you know, three months ago, four months ago. I have also a trio which we brought to your church about three years ago. The lady who sings with us, she told me just recently, she said, you know, since you've been telling us all about this, finally I decided to change my lifestyle. She says, 
she goes on a vegan diet for a long time and she feels great, lots of energy. And then once in a while she's given and eat some meat and she says she's been lethargic for the next week or 10 days. Amazing. Vegan, you know, vegans have much more energy. Now, you're all grown up and I'm going to tell you one thing more. Did you know that vegans enjoy sex more than meat eaters? Both men and women. Uh, vegan men have much better erectile function and their sex is better for them. Women who are vegans also have a better, better sexual experience. Yes, you had a question, sir. <laughs> Let me, I'll, I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> How about uh, stress and memory loss? Stress and memory loss? Um, you need that um, saffron kick. Now, let me expand on this uh, erectile dysfunction. There are approximately, you have a question, sir? What effect does uh, microwaves have on bacon as potatoes? Actually, surprisingly enough, again, I go by science, okay? I don't go by fads or the latest thing. I go by science. I have researched this topic about microwave cooking. It is completely safe. As long as you don't stand there and stare at the food, you know, right next to it. You put the thing, start the clock and walk away. Uh, microwave cooking is safe. It maintains about 90 to 95% per of the nutrients remain in the food when you get done. So the safest way of cooking vegetables actually is microwaving. Steaming is as good. I was wondering because I read reports where a uh, high school kid did an experiment on it and took two flowering plants, yes, identical plants, yes. One they watered with tap water, yes. The other one they boiled the water in a microwave before they used it to water. Yes. Yes. And the one with the microwave water died within 10 days. Well, here I heard that story again. I, I told you I did quite a bit of research on this topic because a lot of people have asked me about this. And I found that these are anecdotal uh, stories that you hear, but I haven't seen any, what they call, in science, we talk about blinded trials, you know, double blind. In other words, the person who boiled the water will not be able to tell the person who is using the water which water is what, and then the plants have to be identical. And you cannot take just two plants. You've got to have 10 plants of each. You know, that's called the minimum size, you know, size. It's called sampling size. Because, like, for example, let me ask you a question. If I have two patients come to see me today, one patient lived, one patient died, what is Dr. Chalaya's mortality rate? 50%. Would you go see the doctor who's got a, one or two people who come to his office dies? But is that a good, is that a good study? No. You got to take 10,000 patients, all right? So uh, the sampling error is a problem. Let me, if, are you done? I'll go back to the other topic. Um, do you know there are approximately about 3.8 billion men, about three, uh, no, about three billion men in this world? You know, there are about seven billion people, about two to three uh, billion are children, then the rest, about five, about two and a half, three billion men, okay? I, maybe two billion, two billion men. Two billion men is this whole world, okay? Out of the two billion men, there are only 100 million men with erectile dysfunction. Well, you're not letting me finish, man. <laughs> the United States of America, we have about, about three, uh, three million, oh, what is it, three hundred. We have 100 million men, not billion, 100 million men in the United States. Okay, only 100 million. Do you know 30 million Americans have erectile dysfunction? In other words, in the whole world, the erectile dysfunction is less than 3%. In the United States, erectile dysfunction is 30%. Now, I always tell you, every time I give you bad news, I also give you some good news. They took a group of men with erectile dysfunction, they put them on a vegan diet. Within 18 months, 37% of them are completely cured of the erectile dysfunction. I just finished telling you that sexual experience improves as well. 
but in spite of vegan diet you still have erectile problem you can consume two products watermelon and pistachio peas pistachio nuts both improve erectile dysfunction stress you will need to lower it through you know prayer and uh, you know handling the situation as it comes because you know you cannot go on through life without stress stress is part of life you have to learn to cope with the stress rather than try to avoid you cannot avoid stress okay you are driving along very peacefully under the speed limit some drunk comes and hits you you got stress did you cause it absolutely not but you have to handle it yes any other question yes ma'am you have no you mean you mean supplement you mean the third supplement i recommend is called um omega 3 dha you can buy supplement they made without fish do you know how the omega 3 ends up in the fish it doesn't make it in the body it doesn't make it in the body it gets it from eating uh, see we call golden algae now the scientist said instead of going to the fish that eats golden algae they take the golden algae grow it in the lab and they extract the omega 3 you need about 200 mg of omega 3 200 to 250 mg of omega 3 daily you don't have to take all the notes because all of that's typed up in that handout now let me explain to you something suppose suppose i'm sure the federal federal uh, police will catch me and throw me in jail but let's assume i took a gallon of sodium cyanide dropped it into the pacific ocean here in los angeles i dumped it and soon after i picked up a glass of water and drank it would i die i said soon i dumped it and i immediately picked another glass of water and drank it would i die yeah i probably will die if i dump it right there and picked up a glass of water from the ocean and drank it i probably die because that's a lot of cyanide in there right there okay but what if i came back two weeks later no why because that one million one gallon of sodium cyanide now has mixed up with 10 trillion gallons of water okay so let's assume now after two weeks you got only one part in a trillion or million parts of billion parts of water okay so you got one part in billion parts of water one billion parts of water now lots of little fish are floating in there right they gallop, gallop i mean they gulp this water down so at the end of a couple of weeks say each fish picks up say 10 parts per billion are you with me each small fish has 10 parts per billion now here comes a bigger fish eats 100 of these little fish now the big fish how much does it have a thousand parts now here comes a bigger fish eats thousand of those fishes got a million parts okay this is called biological amplification if you don't see one wheat plant eating another wheat plant so it only happens in fish this is why fish is not good for you it picks up the contamination from the ocean and concentrates it concentrates it and then the bigger fish eat that this is why fish is unsafe yes sir you said you had with uh, hydroponic uh, aquaponics well i i don't have any hydroponic experience myself but i've eaten hydroponic tomatoes they taste okay probably not as good as your uh, garden that i although i found a very interesting report recently they found that hydroponically grown plants have actually better nutrition than regular grown you know why because hydroponic is a normal environment it's a stress environment for the plant and you know what happens when the plants are stressed they generate a lot of chemicals to fight back and they are good for you did yes sir you did study aquaponics and see with the fish you don't eat the fish you eat the fish for your experimentation Okay. Yeah. I'll take it under advisement. Any other questions? 
Yeah, there's another lady has a question here. Hold it close to your mouth, please. Yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, flax seed. Yes. You say grinding daily. I mean, you can buy it in the store already ground up. I grind mine and put it in the ice box. Good. I don't get it daily to three times, and then I don't have it. Good. So is it okay? Yeah, what you're doing is good. Her question was, what is the best way to buy, grind, and eat, consume flax seed? The best way it is to buy unground flax seed whole, keep it in the fridge, and take one tablespoon every day, put it in a coffee grinder, and put it in your, uh, you know, uh, whatever mixture you want to eat. That's the best way to do it. Second best is buy freshly ground flax seed in the store with an expiry date that if they manufacture it, it was like maybe a week or two, local. Don't buy it from some distance. And then put it in the fridge and take it and use it within the next couple of weeks, then you're okay. To buy this stuff that's ground and kept there for six months is no good. Because the minute you grind it, it is exposed to air and uh, it starts to deteriorate. There's a man with a question over here. Okay, uh, you know, distress you're talking about infections or stress Urinary incontinence. Stress incontinence. The most common, most common, not always, but most common cause is overweight. That brings me to the next question. Do you know what's the best way to lose weight? Huh? Uh, low fat high complex carb diet. Actually, carbohydrates actually burn more calories. Did you know that? In fact, here's what they did. Scientists did this study. What they did was they took people who take, eat rice on a regular basis. You see, if you took a glass of sugar water, okay? You took a glass of sugar water, drank it, and you measured your blood sugar continuously, this is what it's gonna look like. The blood sugar is gonna rise from zero to high level and then drop, okay? This, this, no, this particular level in a large number of healthy volunteers, college kids, we call it 100. It's an arbitrary number. It's not any fancy number. It's just a number, standard number. Then we compare all the other food to this curve. For example, we ate a watermelon, piece of watermelon. It looks like this. It's almost like drinking sugar water. Okay, if you ate white rice, goes like this. Brown rice, like this. Garbanzo beans, see what I'm talking about? You can eat tons and tons of garbanzo beans and your blood sugar will not budge. This is called glycemic index, okay? Glycemic index. Now, complex carbohydrate will have a low glycemic index, Simple carbohydrates like sugar, I mean, sorry, fruit and fruit juices will have very high glycemic index, all right? Now, if you ate, for example, so how do you use this uh, practical sense? Well, if you decide you want to eat something sweet, like you want to eat some fruit, right? Or you want, you like white rice, like I know somebody told me, I don't like brown rice, I only like white rice. Just make sure you eat some beans with it your glycemic index will go down. Because beans are like glue, they grab onto the sugar, won't let it get into the bloodstream for a number of hours, so to speak. So this is why the Mexican habit, you know, tradition of eating beans or rice is fantastic. But the only problem I say, don't put any meat into it. Then it ruins the whole thing. Okay, let me finish the other part of the story I'm gonna tell you. What they did was they took Asians who ate rice and their rice, the glycemic index was like this. But they added one piece of chicken. The same rice gave the sugar like this. In other words, rice doesn't cause diabetes, but the chicken you added to the rice causes diabetes. Rice doesn't cause diabetes, but the 
you know, bits, bits of pork that they put in there causes diabetes. Rice doesn't cause diabetes, but the fish you put on it causes diabetes. Okay, you had a question. Okay, uh, is it okay to eat uh, tuna? No, ma'am. You know how big tuna you get? It's one of the biggest fish. Do you know how many small fish it ate? It ate? Do you know how much toxin it has accumulated over? Let me ask you a question. About three years ago, the United States United Agriculture Department came out with a recommendation. Pregnant women should not eat fish more than, yeah, tuna, more than once a week, okay? So are they are made to understand that once in a while, if you ate some cyanide, it's okay? Oh, wh wh what's the difference? You know, why should pregnant women have only fish once a week? I mean, I don't understand the logic. If it's got mercury, it's got methyl mercury. It has, by the way, here's some information for those of the younger women who are planning to have children. Do you know that uh, women who consume fish during pregnancy have dumber children? Yes, the children have a lower IQ. Yes, ma'am, it's a fact. And you know, ch women who are trying to have children have a much better chance if you avoid fish because fish, consumption of fish reduces the chance of getting pregnant. Number three, women who have fish have more likely to have girls than boys. So if you are looking for a son or a grandson, stay away from fish. If you want more girls, go for fish, huh? No, I'm saying the children of women who ate fish during pregnancy have a lower IQ. That's, I mean, it's a fact. This is what they found because of the toxins. Yes. Are you down on fish or the toxins? I'm sorry? Are you down on the fish or the toxins? I'm, uh, I'm down on the toxins. In fact, somebody has asked me this question. Jesus ate fish. Yeah, Jesus ate fish, but that wasn't contaminated with tons and tons of dioxin, the PCBs, 2,000 years ago. Okay? So I'm basing it on... See, again, to, so here's... Let me answer the question in another the indirect way. You'll get the meaning of what I'm going to say. If tomorrow I came across 10 studies, properly done, double-blind control studies, which show that eating a steak every day will make me live longer and have lower incidence of cancer and heart attack and stroke, I will start eating steak. Do you get, the, get what I'm trying to get at? I'm here for health. I'm not promoting a particular way of lifestyle. I'm saying, but you, you're going to have a tough time convincing me that you know, eating steak every day is going to make me live longer. Salmon is just as bad, ma'am. Not salmon? as bad as tuna, but it's bad. The salmon way up there in Alaska. The I just finished telling you earlier today <laughs> that the fish caught in North Pole had dioxins. North Pole. Dioxins and PCBs. So what can you do for, like, chronic dry eye? Is there anything you know of? Uh, no, ma'am, I don't. I don't know of a nutritional way to treat that. Any other questions? Here's the thing, you know, I'm not pushing out a particular product or anything like that. By the way, I have nothing to gain. I'll give you some rapid uh, answers. If you have any question, you can ask me. If you have arthritis, start taking turmeric. If you have diabetes, and after you've gone on a vegan diet and daily exercise, 20 to 30 minutes of exercise, you can add another product called amla powder, Asian Indian gooseberry powder. And that was shown to lower the blood sugar in diabetics within one month. It was just as effective as the most commonly used medication for diabetes. By the way, how many fat vegans have you come across? You don't come across too many fat vegans. What am I getting at? There was a very interesting study. They took vegans, they noticed they're all slim. They took, they, they found that the meat eaters were heavy. So they said, 
it must be because the vegans are not consuming enough calories because meat contains more fat. So they told the vegans, we want you to increase the amount of calorie consumption to equal that of the meat eaters. You know what they found? Still the meat eaters were fatter, gained more weight. And they actually analyzed the sub-analysis. They went and found that, you know, which product was the most, um, most, uh, uh, sorry, what's called, most responsible for weight gain of all the animal product? Chicken. Listen, if at the end of this con, at the end of this session, you decided, you know what, I like what Dr. Chalaya says, but I can't give it all up. Let me ask you something. I, this is what they call a fallback position. I'm not telling you this is ideal. But if you say, I can't give up all animal products, at least give up chicken, eggs, dairy, and fish. Well, there is, there is lamb, low-fat lamb, low-fat beef. Am I recommending them? No. But I found out in my research they have less problems than, in other words, they're less dangerous. I would not call it they're healthy. I would say they are less dangerous. Somebody, microphone there, please. Less dangerous than uh, a chicken. Do you know that 100% of the chicken in this country has arsenic? How many knew that? None of you knew that? All the chicken available in the United States commercially contains arsenic. So also all the pork. All the pork that's available in the United States commercially contains arsenic. Number two, 92% of all chicken has fecal contamination. In other words, you're eating poop. I'm putting it bluntly. Okay? And you know what the common answer to me is? I will cook the poop out of it. Well, here's the problem. Here's the problem. They actually did a study. I told you, I only go by science. Okay. Actually, they did a study. They found that even though the E. coli bacteria, which is the contaminant from fecal matter, are present in the meat, when they're cooked, they get destroyed. Yes, but here's the problem they found. The toxins they produce while they were still alive are still in the meat. And they are not destroyed by any form of cooking. Okay? And they were able to find, using very sophisticated scientific technology techniques, they were able to find those toxins going from the intestine into the bloodstream, causing arthritis, breast cancer, liver cancer, lung cancer, um, lymphoma, and leukemia. And most importantly, arthritis. You think your old age arthritis? It's from your chicken. And when you get off this animal product, you can get better. Yes, sir. OK. You talked about uh, using turmeric uh, for arthritis. Yes, sir. What is the best way to use it, and how often, and uh, how long before you see any resist or uh, help? Um, I don't know whether I can get somebody to tell you how, how fast it works. No? OK. Um, it works very fast. Uh, turmeric can work as fast. I've seen it work in three days. Okay? Now, uh, any way you can take the turmeric is fine. Uh, if you are uh, somebody like me who cooks Asian Indian food, we, you know, we cook with turmeric every day. All our curries and stuff made with turmeric. But I still take extra turmeric, and that's why I came up with the formula, one teaspoon turmeric. But anytime you take turmeric, you must use a pinch of black pepper with it, because it improves the bioavailability of turmeric by 2,000%. In other words, one teaspoon of turmeric with a pinch of black pepper is same as you're consuming 20 teaspoons of turmeric. Uh, microphone, please. Instead of using black pepper, um, could you use the cayenne and have the no, same? No, it doesn't work. Is cayenne? I know where you're coming from, ma'am. I'm, I'm, I know where you're coming from. I know where you come from. You know, I'm uh, familiar with Ellen White's writings. Here's the way it is. You're using it as a medicinal purpose. You're not using it in large amount cooking. So if you use it to enhance the effect of turmeric, I think there's no problem with it.
Did that answer your question? We are using a tiny pinch. You don't need much. That's all you need to improve it. The other way you can do is you can use mustard. Mustard also improves the, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. No, mustard doesn't do it. I'm sorry, that's a different thing. Uh, you, must, you must use a small pinch of black pepper with it. That's it. Another question. Any other questions? Yes, uh, you had another question. So I've uh, heard a little bit of controversies around coconut oil and avocados, particularly in terms of increasing weight. Um, what have you seen in your study? Coconut, um, I, have, I have read a lot of the reports. Unfortunately, those are all biased reports. The unbiased scientific studies, if you want to look it up, by the way, this is the best way to look it up. Go to uh, www.pubmed.com gov g o v this is the site that is run by the national institute of health this will list all the articles that have been published on any particular topic in the entire world like suppose you were to look up you, today you go to that site and you know a punch in say tangerines you will get about 6000 articles on tangerines okay and then if you say save search and put your email in there Every morning, they'll send you any new article that has been published on your particular topic. Every day, free of charge. Okay? So, I looked at the PubMed. There are no articles, scientifically published articles that are, you know, properly done articles that show the benefit of coconut oil. I only found the opposite. Believe it or not, I love coconut oil. In India, we use coconut oil in a lot of cooking. It tastes fabulous. But unfortunately, coconut oil is the only vegetable oil. It's fully saturated, and so it will cause your cholesterol to go up very quickly. Now, there's a report about coconut oil will improve Alzheimer's baloney. You know what? You know what improves Alzheimer's? Saffron. What happened to my saffron? Oh, there. 30 milligrams of saffron was just as effective as Aricep for uh, uh, Alzheimer's. By the way, why take this if you can avoid Alzheimer's? Do you know what the incidence of Alzheimer's in China, Korea, and Japan? In India, particularly. India has the lowest number of Alzheimer's cases in the whole world as a country. Why is that? And they also consume they found that there's a good correlation between the Alzheimer's reduction or low incidence of Alzheimer's with the consumption of whole grains. Okay? So, you want to avoid Alzheimer's, you want to go with grains, whole grains. That's what you need. High fat. I just read an article just two days ago. No, yesterday I saw an article come through in my... Uh, email showing that there's a direct correlation between high cholesterol consumption and Alzheimer's. Yes, sir. You ha uh. oh yes, avocado actually is avocado is actually good for you. Uh, in spite of some of the the only problem I found was they're high fat. So you want to if you want to lose weight. You also want to avoid temporarily. I emphasize the word temporarily. Please don't misquote me. Don't say, Dr. Chalaya says I shouldn't do this. I'm saying temporarily stop eating fruit, nuts, seeds. Temporarily for 30 to 60 days, you will experience a much better lo weight loss. Yes. Fruit juices are no, no. Never consume fruit juices. Yes, ma'am. My friend called me two weeks ago and she said she read that all rice, white and uh, brown rice, has arsenic in it. Yes, rice contains arsenic in it. You know where it came from? From the ground. You know how it got there? I gave you a clue. No, I gave you a clue just a few months ago, a few minutes ago. Dumping. They, do you know they use chicken industry and pork industry uses 15 tons of arsenic every year? Where do you think that dung goes from the chicken excretion and the pig? Where does it end up? The ground goes in the water. That's how the arsenic is in the uh, grain. But the, here's the thing: the arsenic in the rice 
is much less than that in the chicken. So skip the chicken, eat the rice. The yeah, other uh, question is yes. how much is that bottle of uh, saffron? This uh, saffron contains, uh, it contains uh, five grams. Five grams is the same as 5,000 milligrams. You divide that by 30. Who's a good mathematician here? I mean the price. Yeah, I'm just telling you. There are five grams, that means 5,000 milligrams, okay? You need only 30 milligrams a day. So how many doses can you get out of it? I think my, I'm not a very good mathematician. I think I calculated 166 doses. This cost me $30. $30. So divided by 166, it's about 18 cents a day. You think you can afford it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I must give you my testimony on turmeric. <laughs> I was uh, singing at a county fair, and that's where we met. Is, uh, he was packing up his stuff there, and I was curious as to this fellow, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, he called me up later, and, and we talked about singing, and he, he invited me to come and sing with him and his group, and to come and meet him and share that he had enjoyed hearing my music that day. And so I said to him, I don't... Um, I wasn't really going to show up that day because I had very much inflammation in my left knee that I could hardly walk. And I had been to my chiropractor, I had had six adjustments, I'd been to my primary doctor, he'd sent me to the specialist and they were ready to um, set up a, a scope of my knee. And uh, he said, may I recommend something to you? And I go, sure. And he goes, have you heard of turmeric? I go, oh, I know all about turmeric, I make pickles with turmeric. And he says, well, how about if you take one teaspoon of turmeric, dissolve it in some warm water, and, and add a little bit of black pepper in there, and, and try that? And so, first time I took it, I called him up, and I go, really, no? <laughs> okay. The fourth morning, I called him up, and I said, I have no more inflammation in my knee. Praise I, the Lord, right? I continue to cook with turmeric and take turmeric, and so I went back to my chiropractor. And I walked in, he goes, wow, you were barely moving to get out of here the last time I saw you. What have you done? And I said, have you heard of turmeric? Oh, yes, I've heard of turmeric. I went back to my pharmacist and I said, Dean, have you heard of turmeric? And I told him what, you know, how it had affected me. And he said, well, I just started stocking turmeric capsules. So anyway, I'm living proof that I can walk and I didn't have to see that specialist. It's been a year and three months, right? Yeah, last August is when she started using turmeric. So it works. It works great. And you know something? It has been used in cooking for 5,000 years in India. And we haven't heard of too many people dying of turmeric poisoning. Okay? Yes, sir. One of the things I found for a good pain uh, killer is a tablespoonful of cinnamon, two tablespoons full of raw honey in a cup of warm water. Well, I haven't tried the concoction, so I can't tell you whether it works or not, but if you tell me, I've, but none of the ingredients he has mentioned has any harmful effect, so I said, okay. Only thing I want to caution you, when you buy cinnamon, make sure it is the true cinnamon, called the Ceylon cinnamon, not the Chinese cinnamon. Chinese cinnamon is known as cassia. That contains a, a poison, and very often it is used in the same recipes as to, uh, the, you know, real cinnamon, but you don't want to use it because the, there's a poison in it that has been considered not safe for you. So you want to buy true Ceylon cinnamon, you know, and the way you tell that is that it's a smaller one that's rounded, you know, the, it's a bark, cinnamon is a bark. It's, yeah, the big one, the big one, that's a cassia cinnamon, you don't want to do that, okay? Sri Lanka, yes, ma'am. Sri Lanka cinnamon, yes. Um, I also just wanted to ask you, you know when you were talking about the avocado and losing yes. weight and all that, could you just clarify, you were saying that if someone is truly eating a fully vegan diet, because I know people who say, oh, avocados are so fattening, but they'll eat the piece of cake, but they won't eat the avocado. And the avocados have a lot of nutrition in them. Correct. And so I just wanted to ask you about that because we're, 
you know, that's an assumption that they're following everything else. But Correct. That is why I, uh, I, I said, if you're already a fully uh, vegan, full vegan, okay? Vegan means no, cake is not vegan, okay? I mean, there are possible, you can make cake without, I think my sister makes them, but, you know, but you have to make an, you make an extra effort to make. The standard cake that you eat is not vegan by any stretch of imagination. By the way, one average egg contains 200 milligrams of cholesterol, 212 milligrams of cholesterol. You know what your daily limit of cholesterol is? Only 200. I just finished telling you, one egg consumption, or one egg a day will make your cancers, at least one particular cancer, prostate cancer, spread twice as fast. So again, if you're at your target weight, eat all the fruit and nuts as much as you want. No limit, okay? But if you are not at your target weight, you want, and you're happy with your weight, that's fine. But if you want to lose weight, you got to stop eating fruit and nuts and seeds. Again, I said temporarily, not permanently, just until you get to your target weight, then you can go back to it. You won't gain weight on uh, fruit and nuts, but you will not lose weight because there was, let me finish that. There was a study where actually they found that everybody says nuts is full of fat, nut is full of fat. It's true, but you know what they found? There are 18 studies published, 18 studies, out of which uh, 15 or 16 studies showed that nuts don't make you fat at all. In fact, they showed that they makes you lose weight, okay? So this idea, if you consume nuts on a regular basis, you'll gain weight is not true. But you won't lose weight if you want to go down on the weight. By the way, nuts have to be natural in the raw state, not roasted with honey and, you know, honey and uh, butter. That doesn't work, okay? So avocados are good for you, bottom line, as long as you're at target weight and you enjoy as much as you want, no problem. Yes, Pastor. We have learned that if you soak the nuts and then put them in a dehydrator, yes, that it is easier to digest the nuts. I believe it, yes. That's correct. Talk, yes, sir, you had a question. Talking about the honey, we need to really read the labels very, very well because at the dollar stores and everything else, China. Okay. And it's not real honey. So yes. even though you make the assumption honey's honey, honey isn't honey. Also, let me tell you a couple of other stuff too. She needs a microphone. I'll also tell you a couple of things about honey, okay? You know, everybody says, don't eat white sugar, but honey is better, okay? Um, based on my research, uh, yeah, maybe 1% better. I don't think so. It doesn't, the sugar is bad. Do you know that within hours of consuming sugar of any kind, brown sugar, white sugar, honey sugar, your blood vessels stiffen up like hard cardboard. They lose the elasticity. So yeah, you don't want to do that. Within, uh, within one hour, they actually took a group of volunteers, they gave them breakfast sandwich from these big yellow arches, you know, breakfast sandwich. Within one hour, the blood vessels all stiffened up, fully inflamed. And it took six hours for the inflammation to drop. You know what happened six hours later after breakfast? Cheeseburgers and fries. The inflammation shot up again. Six hours later came supper, fried chicken with uh, mashed potatoes and gravy. The inflammation shot up again. The blood vessels are in constant state of inflammation when you consume animal products. I will come to that in a minute. Nobody heard what your question, so I'll let her and I'll come back to you, ma'am. Yes? What can you do or use to improve your digestion? Believe it or not, I have an answer for you. And a lot of you will not agree with me, but I'm gonna give you, I told you, I deal with facts, not fiction, okay? Japanese scientists took patients with irritable bowel syndrome, you know, constant indigestion, and, and they gave them capsules of cayenne pepper, the hot chili cayenne pepper, there was a dramatic improvement in their dyspepsia and irritable bowel syndrome. Dramatic improvement. 
Okay. Ma'am, you had a question. Um, that you have on the paper that canola oil is, um, it's, you know, you use canola oil and it's, it gives you, it's high in omega something, but canola oil causes an increased state of inflammation. And canola oil is not a good oil. It's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a poor quality oil. It's well, uh, what do you recommend instead? Olive. Well, olive oil, you cannot cook with it. The minute you heat the olive oil, it deteriorates, becomes cancer producing chemical. Here's what I would recommend, okay? Here's my general observation. All oils are bad for you, including, including olive oil. Would you agree with that? All oils are bad for you. Even a drop of oil will cause inflammation of your blood vessels. So none of, no oil is good for you. The only oil that's good for you, it's already within the seed. In other words, eat the almond, don't drink the almond oil. You know, eat the peanut, don't eat the, drink the peanut oil. See what I'm getting at? The minute the oil is exposed to air, it begins to deteriorate. Correct. So I take the view that no oil is good for you anyway. But I told you I'm taking the lesser of the two evils. If you're going to cook with, you have to have some oil to cook with, I would say stick to canola because that is less dangerous, let me use that word, less dangerous than most of the oils that are available today, okay? Grapeseed may be okay as well. Here's the problem. The ratio omega-3 to omega-6 is what makes the oil good or bad, okay? Olive oil has the best ratio. However, it is very sensitive to heat. The minute you heat it, so the only way you can use olive oil is after, at the end of cooking, add it for flavoring. You don't want to cook with it. You don't want to heat the oil. Yes, Pastor? Well, coming back to sweets. Yes. <laughs> you, you say we should not eat any fruit, but... No, sir. No, 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 no. Please don't. I didn't say that. Please don't misquote me. I said, if you are already at your target weight, a vegan, eat as much fruit and nuts as you want, okay? But I'm saying, if you are unhappy with your weight and you say, I would like to lose 10 pounds, then temporarily avoid fruits, nuts, and seeds. Temporarily. So raisins and dates are all right. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you are happy with your weight, go right ahead. And, Pastor, I've got a special idea for you. How many of you like chocolate? You know chocolate is bad for you, right? But again, I'll tell you, every time I give you bad news, I give you good news since at the same time. You can make your own chocolate. Why is chocolate bad? Let me explain. It contains cocoa powder, which is fantastic. But it has cream and sugar, which are bad. I just finished telling you, cream will block the nutrient absorption from cocoa powder. But here's my solution. Go buy baking cocoa powder for cooking purposes with this, without sugar. You buy that baking, baking, I'm sorry, uh, cocoa baking, baking cocoa powder, and then add this sugar. This is called erythritol. It is not a chemical made in the factory. It is made, it's naturally occurring lots of fruit, okay? But Japanese scientists figure out a way to make more of it using a bacteria yeast, okay? This is a natural product. It has no calories. All diabetics can use it, can so normal people. In fact, I all make all my desserts with this. It is 70% as sweet as sugar, but since it doesn't have any calories, what do you care? You put more of it. Erythritol. Well, I'll pass it around. How's that? A, a health food store. There are two downsides to it. It's not cheap. You can buy sugar for 59 cents a pound, but let me ask you a question. Have you priced, uh, have you priced heart attack lately? Huh? Stroke? Have you priced the cost of stroke lately? Erythritol, erythritol is a, uh, that is listed in your handout too, sir. Okay? Erythritol, yeah, it's all in there. Erythritol is the sugar. So here's what you do. You take baking, baking uh, cocoa, Add erythritol, okay, and you can add um, 
any other thing that you want make into a little fudge chocolate fudge sweet yes yeah yes yeah cocoa powder but carob uh, cocoa powder has a lot more um, nutrients than carob i know where you're going with this uh, cocoa powder contains a tiny amount of caffeine again i am looking at remember lesser of the two evils that's what i'm talking about you get so much a benefit from cocoa powder a tiny amount of caffeine in there listen if you are eating chocolate don't tell me about caffeine okay you consume tons and tons of caffeine when you're eating chocolate even dark chocolate so don't tell me about that i'm telling you yes there's a tiny amount of caffeine in the cocoa powder but the benefits far outweigh the uh, small negative okay so carob doesn't have as many benefits as such uh, yes ma'am i have heard that uh, mushrooms are not good for you because they're a fungus is that true no ma'am in fact mushrooms are good for you in fact all women should be eating mushrooms on a daily basis or at least three or four times a week why but never eat raw mushrooms there is a there is a poison in raw mushroom called agaritine but the minute you heat it even for 2 3 minutes agaritine is gone then it's safe for you to eat here's why you should be eating mushrooms on a daily basis they found that it it actually reduces the risk of breast cancer by 65% by blocking the enzyme called aerobatase enzyme which actually uh, creates estrogens which uh, breast cancer cells thrive on so by reducing the levels of estrogen through blocking the aromatase enzyme uh, cooked the plain by the way you don't need exotic mushrooms chanterelle or all this fancy one. the plain old butt mushroom will do the trick yes sir isn't uh, mushrooms the only uh, uh, only vegetable that has vitamin d yes that's correct i, I don't only vegetable but it has vitamin d yes um she has a question i will you talk as long as you want but i think we probably should wrap it up in the next i will tell you about how about we give you another 15 more minutes and we'll wrap it up how's that okay if you want more information i guess you'll have to invite me back and give me a such a nice lunch i had that was fantastic you know what i found there the three things i recommend what are they beans greens and whole grains there you go yes uh, what's good for i mean for leg pains leg pains legs i talk about night pain night time pains or, yeah. or constant pain yeah. uh there are three things you can use turmeric is good for inf reducing inflammation but did you know bing you know what bing cherries are black cherries do you know they are as effective as ibuprofen or aleve for arthritis 10 to 15 cherries will do the same job you know how they work they work in the same way that aleve and ibuprofen work in fact they are better than aleve and ibuprofen okay um on uh, if you want me to go into details i'll go into the detail but here the question yes go uh, you please uh, give the website that you was saying that it has a lot of uh, reviews like a uh, 600 reviews you said uh, yeah i'm sorry pubmed.gov pub pubmed p u b public p u b med m e d dot gov that is the site run by the national institute of health the federal government they gather all the articles published in reputable medical journals anywhere in the world on a daily basis and they publish it so you can i told you if you push in like you know search for tangerine you'll see about 6000 articles on tangerine or 7000 articles on tangerine all the one that have ever been published and then if you say save search and put your email they'll send you every time a new article is published on tangerines or you want to know about arthritis pain every time there's a new article published on the topic they'll mail it to you email it to you free of charge any other question would anybody like to know how cherries do the job it'll take me 5 minutes to explain suppose 
you know, in England, I've heard of, um, you know, England and Ireland, apparently uh, the stomach, sheep's intestine and stomach is a very delicacy. Have you heard of it? Sheep's intestine and stomach. They make a kind of a special dish out of it. Here's the bottom line. If you eat, yeah, if you eat the stomach of an animal, be it sheep or lamb or whatever, your stomach will digest it, right? Now, if the stomach acid in your stomach is able to digest the sheep's stomach lining, how come it doesn't dissolve your own lining in your stomach? Have you ever wondered about that? Why? Because there is an enzyme, there's a chemical called cyclooxygenase enzyme that protects the lining of the stomach from being digested by the juice, gastric acid. It's called cyclooxygenase. Now, cyclooxygenase is a long num name. Cyclooxygenase. Now, we medical doctors don't like to keep using cyclooxygenase every time, so we call it COX, COX enzyme. There are two kinds. There's COX-1 and COX-2. The COX-1 enzyme is the one that protects the lining of the stomach from being digested by its own acid. The one that causes inflammation of the joints, causing arthritis and bone pain, is COX-2 enzyme. So the COX-1 is a good guy, COX-2 is a bad guy. They're related, they're similar, but they're not identical, okay? So when scientists figured out that the COX enzyme is the bad guy, they said, oh, we'll come up with a drug that will block COX enzyme. But they could not come up with the enzyme that only blocks COX-2, the bad guy, without blocking COX-1. That is why ibuprofen, all these um, arthritis medicine will rip up your stomach. Thousands of people die every year because of gastric ulceration and bleeding, okay? So a company, we won't mention names, came up with a new drug that say, hey, we discovered a chemical that will block COX-2 only without blocking COX-1. And it's sold by the billions. They made billions of dollars until people started dying. So they had to take them out the market. It's called Vioxx. Have you heard of Vioxx? Yeah, it'll be taken out of the market because it caused a lot of deaths. So the trick is this, we need an enzyme, I'm sorry, we need a chemical that blocks COX-2 without blocking COX-1. Here comes the creator. Jesus the creator created Bing cherries, which contains a chemical which blocks COX-2 enzyme and doesn't touch COX-1. See? Creator made this for you, put it in the Bing cherries. The Rainier cherries, the lighter cherries don't have it. The dark cherries have it. So if you ate 10 to 15 dark, dark cherries a day, it will dark, black. Cherries, that will reduce arthritis pain. It is just as effective, maybe even more effective, but definitely much safer than ibuprofen or Aleve or any of those, um, you know, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Amazing, huh? Somebody has a question there, sir, at the back, sir. You want to take 10 more minutes, we'll be done. Yes. What I'm wondering is, uh, could you get the dried cherry and it will do the same, or do you have to have the fresh? Uh, fresh or frozen? Frozen is almost as good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, dry doesn't seem to have as much uh, of the nutrients. Any other question? You got five more minutes. Yes, you had a question, ma'am. With the mushrooms that we ladies should eat, can we saute them or we just have to? Cook it any way you like it, ma'am, except deep frying it. Really? Don't bread it and deep fry it. That doesn't do any good. Okay, so we can saute it with vegetables and just use maybe. We grapes. had some yesterday. My sister made some for us yesterday and had the spinach and mushrooms. Absolutely delicious. And with ice cream, are we okay with the soy ice cream? 
as long as it doesn't contain any eggs or milk, dairy, you're okay. okay. And make sure it doesn't contain a lot of other chemicals. For example, they know there is a chemical called Queen 80. Have you heard of it? T-W-E-E-N 80. It has about six different names. They use it as emulsifier and ice creams and all that. And that actually causes inflammatory bowel disease, causes leakage of the gut, and causes all kinds of, not good for you. Tween 80, T-W-E-E-N 80. It goes under five, three or four different names, okay? So these additives are made, put into, you know that ice cream contains antifreeze, right? Commercial made ice cream contains antifreeze. Were you aware of that? A lot of people didn't know that, do you? Yeah, it contains propylene glycol. You, you look up the ingredients because it prevents crystallization so you have a smooth texture and they often odd after often add <laughs> twin 80. So those chemicals, if you can make the ice cream without those, you're better off. He had a question too, sir. Oh, you have a question? No? Okay, no, okay. Any, yeah, you, uh, she has a question, let's take her first. Next, then she's third. Please talk about uh, vinegar. I got mixed reports. I, vinegar, I didn't find too many bad effects of vinegar, but vinegar doesn't seem to be good for you on a general basis. But here's the beauty. Do you know every time you need to use vinegar, you can substitute with uh, lemon juice? So why not use lemon juice? Because you see, lemon juice also, it's an acid. When it enters your body, it becomes uh, alkaline, whereas vinegar remains acidic. That's the reason why I don't uh, like vinegar. In fact, I have my own version of, um, quote unquote, American version of, um, no, 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 you like that uh, sauerkraut? You can make it, I made it with purple cabbage, you know, with lemon juice, it comes out really good. Um, she, 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 yes, and then she, your third ma'am. Yes. What can you do for leaky gut syndrome? Leaky gut syndrome? What you need to do is stay away from all artificial chemicals like Tween 80 and any emulsifiers, thickeners, those are all deadly on their thing. And start taking cayenne pepper. She had a question, sir. Yes, you had a question, sir. Uh, what's the difference between like uh, apple cider vinegar and regular vinegar? Not a whole lot of difference. Because you see, you start off with a different product, but you end up with the same chemical acetic acid. Basically, vinegar is 3% acetic acid, okay? And yes, when you get it out of apples, you get a slight apple flavor. When you get it out of peaches, you get a peach flavor. Like It's like saying, you know, alcohol has different flavors from which, by the way, did you know that alcohol is vegan? Completely vegan. You knew that, right? So I'm not recommending all vegan products. <laughs> Don't misquote me. Dr. Chala said, if it's vegan, I can eat it. So you know, alcohol is vegan, right? Yeah, it's made from grain. Not good for you. I'm not recommending a vegan product whole, wholesale. <laughs> I mean, whole foods, whole foods, vegan. <laughs> yes, you had a question. I'm taking NATO kidneys instead of a blood thinner. Does it equal a blood thinner? For what, ma'am? It depends on what? Heart failure, congestive heart failure. It, it might be okay, but if you have like artificial valve, you have to be on warfarin. If you have a blood clot, you have to be on you know, either warfarin or one of the newer chemicals. But if you're just trying to improve your general status, uh, that's okay. No, I mean the doctor prescribed the blood thinner and aspirin every day and I said, I don't know much about that uh, product that you're talking about, so I can't tell you with any authority. Um, aspirin is not good for you, but then again, we come across a situation of, you know, which is the lesser of the two evils. Uh, Pastor has a question, sir. I'm seeming to do okay for three years. Yes. But every time I go to the doctor, he wants me to <laughs> Yes, go ahead. Well, I went through that same thing, uh, Mara. I was taking, what did you call it? Uh, Warfarin? Natokinase. Okay. And the doctor took me off of that and told me to take 
eloquence, and that's what I'm on. I don't have to have any blood tests. I use eloquence all the time. I see. I can't tell you much about it because I don't know. I haven't researched that particular product. Any other question? We got four more minutes to go, two more minutes to go. Well, let me close with this thought, okay? God put all these plants for our benefit. Everything you need can be derived. In fact, most of the modern medications have been derived from plants. Okay? I recommend a whole foods, plant-based diet. I am a board certified heart specialist. I do recommend certain problems, certain procedures. I do pacemakers when it's needed. There are some conditions which you cannot cure naturally, but 85% of all chronic illnesses can be treated and prevented and even cured with uh, you know, uh, this kind of a vegan lifestyle. So I highly recommend it. And you know, by all means, what does Bible say? Above all, I'm sorry, be in good health. I'm hoping that you'll take some of these messages home with you. There are handouts. I brought 100 of each of those 12 handouts. Please help yourself. You need extra for your friends, family. Help yourself. God bless you all. Good night.